Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, here once again with another awesome video. We just did Magellan. He just did this like awesome uh, a voyage uh, across the world, around the world. Uh, so he was the first one. Now on the Francis Drake sails around the world. Uh, did they both kind of sail around the world? Maybe they go in different directions. I, I, I don't know the difference. I just think this is probably like 50, 100 years later. I, I forget what the time frame is here. Uh, so he was going on his sail around the world. I'm expecting a different route. But I, I don't know. I don't know what to expect, to be honest. Uh, the first Magellan, I mean, he lost like nine over 90% of his crew. Like, that's pretty insane, man, <laughs> when you think about it. Uh, yeah, they, they sailed around to get, like, spices. I found, like, a, a faster way to get spices and all that stuff. And uh, I guess they found a faster way uh, as long as you survive the voyage. Uh, but I guess, I guess you know, the first time you got you got to learn. And uh, now they know where not to make pit stops, right? <laughs> but anyways, guys, uh, I'm on a Francis Drake. Uh, where's Francis Drake from? From France? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess the name says it's France, but I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm going to find out. Uh, but anyways, hit that like and subscribe, guys, below. Now, curious, you guys watching this, would you guys be the kind of people that would kind of go on a ship like this and like to sail around the world into the unknown? Not me. Not me. Uh, I'm good at sitting at home on a farm or something. But anyways, uh, yeah. Uh, anyways, yeah, we're going to get out of the video. I already did that. Like and subscribe, Julia. So, yeah, do that. <laughs> but, yep, yeah, this one's on... Oh, this is uh, Epic History's channel. We've done a lot of videos if you if you... If you're new to my channel, we do a lot of videos in Epic History. I've almost done them all, I think. So definitely check those uh, playlists out. And uh, yeah, let's check it out. I'm very interested. Three, two, one, bam. This is an Epic History TV simple history collaboration. Mm -hmm. Supported by our sponsor, The Great Courses Plus. In the 1560s and 70s, Protestant England under Queen Elizabeth was the bitter rival of Philip II's Catholic Spain. Philip ruled over a vast New World empire that produced a fortune in gold and silver for the Spanish treasury. The English looked on with envy. Though England and Spain weren't technically at war, Elizabeth secretly supported English pirates and smugglers who set out to get rich at Spain's expense. Amongst them, Francis Drake. Drake mm. had made several voyages to Spain's New World Empire, where he'd sold African slaves and raided... So Francis Drake was a pirate? Is that what they're kind of pointing at? Like, you know, Elizabeth, the Queen Elizabeth, supported the pirates, and then they kind of bring up Francis Drake. So I'm assuming he was a pirate. New World Empire where he'd sold African slaves and raided ships and settlements. In Panama... I mean, he's a pirate. He's selling slaves. I mean, obviously not the best person. You know, obviously, uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess it takes, you know, some pretty... Uh, to, to get in that kind of job. I mean, you... I guess you... Your morals can't be too high, you know. If if you're a pirate or making your living at sea, you know. I guess, like I said, they're selling slaves. So you know, anyone is pirate. I guess, it, you know, not very good people we're dealing with here. I'm assuming, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to get into you know uh, all this controversial stuff. Anyways. Panama, he'd climbed a tree to get a view of the Pacific Ocean and dreamed of becoming the first Englishman to sail it. His chance came in 1577, when the Queen entrusted him with a secret mission 
to raid the Spanish Empire's Pacific coast. I think I've seen... What TV show was it? I Probably not. I've probably even seen some TV show. I, I've seen... Like, I love, like, watching TV series for, from this time period. I love it. Uh, I've seen, like, Queen Mary, Elizabeth, and, you know, there's so many good TV shows from this period. And I, I, I remember one with Pirates and Elizabeth talking. I, I'm probably, it's probably a totally different person. Never mind. So, sorry. Secret mission to raid the Spanish Empire's Pacific coast. On the 13th of December, Drake sailed for the New World with five ships and 164 men. Five ships and 164 men. Let's see how he fares. En route, Drake's fleet captured several Spanish and Portuguese ships, as well as a Portuguese navigator who knew the South American coast and became their guide. Hmm. After a rough crossing of the Atlantic and 63 days without sight of land, Drake reached the coast of Brazil. He struggled south in heavy seas to reach Puerto San Julian by June. Here, he decided to wait out the winter storms. Okay, so right now we're basically doing the same, if I remember correctly, the same route, right, as... Uh... Magellan. So let's have, let's see how he fares. I remember, I think at this point in the voyage last time, like Magellan's here, I think it's in a mutiny or something. Like they took off on him, like they wanted to head back home. I wonder how Drake's crew, you know, if they're going to turn on him, you know, or they're going to take off on him, or if they're all like, you know, gun ho with him, you know. He's going to stop for the winter. Okay. Here, he decided to wait out the winter storms. 58 years before, Magellan, leader of the first and at that yeah. time only expedition to sail around the world, had wintered at the exact same place. Drake's crew even found grisly remains of the men Magellan had had executed here for mutiny. By coincidence, Drake also put on trial one of his leading officers here, Thomas Doughty, and found him guilty of trying to sabotage the expedition. They found the remains? Like, what are the odds that you stop at the exact same spot? I mean, what if you stopped, like, because, you know, you could be a couple hundred yards down the, down the, the coastline, and not run into the bones or whatnot. So, I don't know. That's pretty crazy. I mean, I guess we, I guess they documented this, right? Because, you know, it's not just like, I don't know, word of mouth or anything, right? That's pretty, that is that pretty insane if that's true, that they stopped at the exact same spot. Like, that's like hitting the lottery. You know, but the same kind of odds, like, like what, like, like one in a billion or something? I don't know. Thomas Doughty, and found him guilty of trying to sabotage the expedition. He, too, was executed. Drake, wow. by now down to just three ships, continued south. Three ships. He made a smooth passage of the Magellan Strait in just 16 days, during which he renamed the Pelican, his flagship, the Golden Hind, a tribute to Sir Christopher Hatton, one of the expedition's sponsors, and his coat of arms. Huh. In September, Drake and his men became the first Englishmen to reach the Pacific, where they were met by 52 days of hurricane winds and mountainous seas. One ship, the Marigold, wow. was lost with all hands. Another, the Elizabeth, sailed back through the strait and fled for home. Only the Golden Hind was left, driven south towards Cape Horn and into the world's roughest seas. Dang, one ship left, man. He had no better luck than Magellan did. Uh, if there's a third trip around the world, uh, if, you, if you're the crew, I think you'd want to do your homework 
because the odds of you surviving are apparently very slim. <laughs> wow, man. Obviously, obviously we know he makes it because obviously, or else we don't watch this video right now. But damn, like how many survive this one? Europeans believed a great southern continent lay in this region, but Drake saw only more ocean. There was no southern continent here, but there was an open sea route around the tip of America, one which would later bear his name. Huh. Great pass. The winds eventually eased, and Drake sailed north hoping to barter for supplies with local tribes on Mocha Island. But they mistook Drake's men for the hated Spanish and attacked. Two of Drake's men were killed, and he himself was badly wounded. Dang. Despite this setback, Drake had now arrived... I mean, it makes sense to think they're Spanish. I mean, they speak... Um... They speak different language, language in the Spanish, but I'm sure the, the locals probably still don't understand what they're saying. And they probably come, you know, a similar looking ships, probably, you know, similar armor, you know, so it, it makes sense, you know, and that you think that they're the enemy, you know, even though they're not. But, you know, I don't know. It's a dangerous world out there, man. You got to defend yourself, especially against the unknown. Despite this setback, Drake had now arrived at the Spanish Pacific coast, which was virtually unguarded and had received no warning of his approach. It was the start of one of the greatest robbing sprees of all time. Oh yeah? First, he hit the Spanish port of Valparaiso, where he took Chilean gold and wine. Then Arica, where he seized 40 bars of silver. Wow. At El Callao, he robbed every ship in the harbor. But more valuable than any loot, he was told that the Spanish treasure ship, Nuestra Señora de la Concepción, had sailed north just two weeks before. <sighs> Drake set off in pursuit. Oh, and yeah? overtook the Spanish galleon off the coast of Ecuador. The Spanish crew had no reason to fear an English pirate in the Pacific. Such a thing was unheard of. So when the Golden Hind opened fire, they were taken completely by surprise and quickly surrendered. In the galleon's hold, Drake's men found 36 kilos of gold, 26 tons of silver, 13 chests of silver coin, jewels, and a golden crucifix. A haul worth today around $60 million. Wow. The Golden Hind, using Peruvian silver for ballast, continued up the coast, stopping off to raid Huatulco. I thought they were going to say that they had to take the ship because, you know, like they've been raiding. I mean, I mean, maybe they had like, too much weight in their ship to carry it all. Like, I guess not. I guess not. But damn, I, I don't know. I still. I mean, you have that much money on your ship, and you see a kind of different country's ship coming at you. I mean, I mean, all men on deck, man. I, I think that you'd be ready for something, you know. You'd be very skeptical, I would think, you know. I don't know. I guess you know, times times were different back then. They weren't expecting nothing. They figured they were friends or something. I don't know. Interesting. Oh, wow, man, he's making bank ballast. <laughs> continued up the coast, stopping off to raid Huatulco in modern Mexico for supplies. For the last few months, Drake had been desperately hoping to rejoin the Marigold, unaware of her destruction in the Southern Ocean. Oh, damn. Now he was forced to accept that the ship and his comrades were lost and headed up the Pacific coast hoping to find a theoretical Northwest Passage back to the Atlantic and England. Drake may have sailed as far north as Vancouver Island before giving up and returning to land in California. 
which he named Nova Albion, New Britain, and claimed on behalf of Queen Elizabeth. The English huh. were welcomed by local Miwok Native Americans. The English thought they were being welcomed as gods. But it's possible that with their pale faces, they were instead seen by the Miwok as ancient spirits returned from the dead. Drake's men spent five weeks making repairs to the Golden Hind, because they knew there was now only one way home. The Spanish in South America were on high alert. And if a Northwest Passage did exist, Drake had failed to find it. So he would sail west. I'm guessing it, the cold, I'm guessing the cold kind of turned him away to get to Vancouver. I mean, it's still a lot. I mean, it's still nice in Vancouver, you know, right now. Uh, but I guess he didn't want to go too far from home. He's like, okay, we've been far enough, you know. We don't want to go too far where, you know, you know, we don't get, you know, we run out of food or supplies. I don't know. But, yeah, good thing he stopped because there, there is no way they – because, you know, there's really no passage up there right now. Eventually, you know, when the, as the temperature rises and the passage, you know, North Canada, you know, starts to melt a little bit, there will be a passage through there. But uh, obviously back then there wasn't. So, and even today, I think that kind of ship would never make it through there. So, yeah, I think it was a pretty smart move to turn around right there. Drake had failed to find it. So he would sail west, across the vast Pacific Ocean, and circumnavigate the Earth in order to get home. Drake set sail on the 23rd of July, 1579. For 68 days, they had no sight of land, but then finally reached Palau, and then the Philippines. Like 68 days at sea, you know that they were probably starving. You're know, like, you're probably with all their provisions and just mostly water. They didn't say that people died going through there, you know, so I guess they all survived, whoever was on that ship. But to finally see land, like, you probably break down in tears just to, like, you know, because you probably think, oh my God, we're going to die out here. There's no land. But, you know, that must have been pretty epic to see, you know? And then the Philippines. They sailed on to the Spice or Maluku Islands and added priceless cloves to a cargo that was already worth a fortune. Yeah. But as the Golden Hind set off for home, disaster struck. Uh oh. Beyond sight of land, in deep water, the ship suddenly hit a reef and stuck fast. The sailors thought they were doomed. They threw cannon and some of their priceless cargo overboard to lighten the ship and prayed to God. 20 hours later, in what seemed to Drake's men a miracle, winds and tide lifted them off the reef. Wow. The Golden Hind continued to thread its way through the islands of Indonesia. And after a two-week stop in Java, Drake set sail across the Indian Ocean. In June, he rounded the Cape of Good Hope and put in at Sierra Leone for fresh supplies. Without further incident, he reached Plymouth on the 26th of September, 1580, with 59 surviving crew. 59. His cargo of gold, silver, and spices made a fortune for Drake and the investors in his voyage. Their return was an estimated 4,600%. Queen Elizabeth was one of those to profit handsomely from his success. And the following year had Drake knighted aboard the Golden Hind in London. Wow. Drake's remarkable voyage made him the first Englishman to circumnavigate the globe. He would go on to win even greater fame with a leading role in the defeat of the Spanish Armada eight years later. 
Huh. Sir Francis Drake today remains one of England's greatest naval heroes. Wow. Drake's daring expedition is part of a story of human exploration that goes right back into prehistory. If you want to find out more, why not start a free trial with The Great Courses Plus? A fantastic on-demand video... Okay, I'm guessing that's it. It's the rest of this commercial. Yeah, it's the rest of this commercial. Wow. Yeah, he had a lot, a lot higher success rate there at the end. Now, I mean, he basically had a lot higher success rate. I mean, he had 48 people survived at almost two, two, it was almost 200, so... Let's just say he had like a thirty percent surviving rate, so it was like over three, over three, over three to four times better surviving rate than Magellan. And I'm guessing he got he came back with a lot more money, man. Like he came back with spice. I mean, probably probably came back with a little bit of everything, but man, he got a lot of money, man. Those men got paid. I hope those uh the sailors. Uh, that went with him. I, I sure hope they gave them them a good big cut of that money to where they didn't have to like sail again for like the rest of their lives. Like they better got like here, he gave them a sack full of coins there or something to where they didn't have to you know suffer or rely on anything again after all they had been through there. That's yeah, crazy. You know, back then you know like and you know, after that you know when, when there's pirates it's like the wild west of the sea pretty much right it's like every man for themselves everyone's just you know you, you need the best man you need the best ships i mean the best guns i mean you can make a killing out there but yeah definitely very interesting and i don't know i enjoyed this little like i guess break between war movies because this was a war but you know it i don't know i think it it does put things in more of a perspective, you know, I show you just how big the world is. I know like most of my videos are probably kind of taking place in Europe and you know, the Middle East and like, you know, Asia area, but like just that, you know, just the, the visuals of him kind of going around the world just shows you how big the earth is and how like, you know, kind of small our little world that we kind of live in and take to our history. Like right now we're like doing like Europe and Middle East. Like that's just like a very small percentage of the globe that we kind of concentrate on. Uh, I mean, most of this because that is because it, it's documented. I mean, like we don't really have, I guess there's, I guess when it kind of comes to like, I guess so, I don't know like how, I guess South America and Africa, not as documented. I mean, I don't know. I mean, cause just because, I don't, I don't know. I mean, that's why, you know, there's just not as much history done on it, or I guess there's not as much interest. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, guys, please hit that like and subscribe button below. I hope you enjoy this video. Um, not sure what we're doing tomorrow. You got to check back to see. And, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the future. It's always a blast. I always like having you guys along with me. You guys are amazing. I love you. And uh, I definitely... Uh, I'm expecting greater and more awesomer stories to go along and yeah and that crazy sea captain one that you guys keep suggesting i'll get to it. i'm not going to get to it right now but i will end up getting to it i guess almost i don't want to do another sea voyage one right now i just did two back to back this little two-part series so i don't want to do another one right now i mean down the line i definitely will do it i just didn't want it all tighten it close together you know it's kind of, it kind of gives it a little break from the regular war videos i guess kind of thing so you know you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying I love everything we do here, you know. Somebody's just got to switch it up a bit, you know, just to change the, change the pace and all that good stuff. But, um, yes, yeah, so like I say, thanks again. Hit that like and subscribe. Uh, and, yeah, I'll definitely catch you guys in future videos. Um, yeah, peace. You guys have a great night, great day. And, yeah, I'm out of here.